This is the same guy that made the video about Jeremy Rogers. Okay, we gotta watch the Terry Kennedy one. Shout out Dusted, bro. He makes some good ass videos. People were telling me to make a video about Terry Kennedy after I made the Steven Fernandez one. And I just didn't feel like it was my place to speak on that. I made the Steven Fernandez video, the <clears throat> mini doc, because you know, I, I grew up watching him. He was like part of my childhood. But Terry Kennedy, I don't know the full story. So this is gonna be pretty informative for me. 10 years in federal prison is the sentence that Terry Kennedy was given after being charged for killing someone in a hotel parking lot. Prior to his conviction, he was mostly known for a successful skateboarding career spanning multiple decades, before going through a very public yet mysterious mental breakdown that ultimately led to his current position. Up until a couple of years ago, Terry Kennedy, commonly known as TK for short, was highly regarded by the majority of the skateboarding community. And now, the sentiment around him ranges from general disappointment to complete disgust. There's been a lot of speculation regarding the details of his story, as well as the people surrounding him. When did he go on the Nine Club? Was that? I, know, like, I feel like I don't remember that. That had to have been a while back, right? Actually led yeah. to such an unfortunate outcome. The question is, how does someone with such a strong legacy and career spiral so quickly? And what causes such a rapid downturn in the first place? This is a look into the life and career of Terry Kennedy. The origin of Terry Kennedy's skate career is a rather unlikely one. He grew up in Long Beach, California, and had a rougher upbringing than most. As with many residents in the Long Beach area back then, much of his family was surrounded by, or directly involved in, gang activity. Because of his background, TK was almost destined to follow the same path himself, had it not been for a simple chance encounter. By a fortunate stroke of luck, when Terry was a kid, he happened to notice a few other kids skating at a nearby park. Intrigued by it, he went over and started talking to them, which eventually led to one of the kids giving Terry a full board and even a pair of skate shoes. Do you remember like how you got into skating? Like, did you see someone pushing down the street and you were like, damn, that looks so sick. Like, yeah, I, I saw somebody to... um, do a tray flip on TV or some shit. Really? And I was like, damn, that shit looks sick as hell. And then I got a board. I don't I, like, I gotta learn that shit. I don't remember exactly how I started. I know like my older brother and like Tony Hawk video games and stuff, but like whenever I see a little kid and I'm on my board, I'll do like a little kick flip or like a tray flip. Cause I just think in the back of my head, like what if like me doing a yeah. trick is the reason they start skating and they become something great for real. They become the next Nyjah. From that point on, TK's life trajectory would change. See, skateboarding isn't exactly the most common thing for kids to do in the hood, and this was especially true back then. But for Terry, it was an outlet he enjoyed that kept him away from the gang activity going on around him. TK was hooked on it, and even though a lot of his neighbors thought it was corny, he found a good group of friends he could skate with that, for the most part, helped him stay out of trouble. He was still surrounded by gang activity, even getting shot in the face and arm at a party early on in his career. What? what? Shot in the face? In the jaw? Damn! How do you get shot in the in the face and live? I guess at the right angle, like it could like hit you from you know like you're, from you're back talking here, and it just goes it. like through your fucking oh, damn. That's fuck. He later said that he did not know why he was targeted. But he pushed through all of the negativity because he knew skateboarding was a better route. As a black kid in the hood skating, he faced a lot of backlash from the people in his neighborhood, which is something he's mentioned in several of his interviews throughout the years. Wait. Was yeah, it like that when you and Casey were growing up? Like, did you guys, did people think it was corny or like, did we you just guys didn't talk? Like, that's weird. I'd like, just don't talk to anyone. Like, it was just me and Casey outside skating. I, I mean, he was around, it said like a lot of gang activity. So, like, he was probably like in in the, in a gang, like trying kickflips mm -hmm. or some shit. I mean, I feel like he was just like friend friends with a lot of like a gang members. Probably something like that. So then they would just be like, man, that skating shit whack or something like that, you know? Like, he'd probably get like a little backlash like that. No, nah, that shit's, but, nah. White boy, shit. you gonna be gang banging like us? Are you gonna be selling drugs? If not, well, you know, we're gonna torture you about it. And like Damn. I said, I had to deal with getting shot, I had to deal with fighting everybody in the neighborhood. I'm right, I used to have to hide my skateboard every day. I used to come home from school because if I didn't, I had to fight with all the kids in the neighborhood. Terry was fortunate in the fact Hating that a couple of the kids he was skating real. with were very good skill wise and were well connected in the skateboarding industry. Spending so much time skating with them helped him progress at a much faster rate than normal. And it also helped him build industry connections much easier as well. After just a few months of skating, Terry was already hanging out with the founders of Baker Skateboards, which was a somewhat new company back then, but has since gone on to be amongst the largest brands in skateboarding. A brand new skater hanging out with pros regularly is not a common occurrence, so this was an amazing Dude, is this Dustin Dolan? Dustin Dolan. Bro, he was like, yo, he was like my go-to character in American Wasteland. I think it was American Wasteland, or oh, one, yeah. of the, one of the Tony Hawk games, bro. He was like my, yo. 
Dustin Dolan. Yo, and I loved this I, picture is sick. Damn. Yeah, that shit hard. Yeah, I I remember uh, I remember going into a skate shop one time and some guy looked like him. And yo, I w- at this point I was like 12, 13. I remembered him from the video, from, you know, the game? video game, and I thought for a second I was him, and I was like, I remember just saying like like he handed me grip tape, and I was like, oh shit. What's up? Like, all, like, and he was just like, what's up, dude? Like, he was just a normal worker. Opportunity yeah. for him. B, Growing up surrounded sick. by pros allowed Terry to start skating at a high level in a very short amount of time, leading him to eventually turn pro himself after just a few years of skating. He didn't necessarily have the best skating, but he had a great personality and stood out among other pros in the skate industry simply because of his character. Sexy ass. Right? Oh, that's me, my bad. This is something you can still see in old comments, with one reading, maybe he's he not the best YouTube skater, series, but he's hilarious. Really? Like a long time ago. That shit was funny as fuck. Do you remember what it was called? Nah. It was called like, fuck, I don't remember, but that shit was funny. And then like, I remember him going grocery shopping and shit. And Chad. Being, like, don't forget the bagel bites. Chad, does anyone know the name of it? Nah. He's an entertainer who can also skate a little. Being an extremely energetic <laughs> guy with a crazy sense of humor, he won over a lot of other skaters, especially due to the way it was portrayed. Niggas, we out there. <laughs> Maybe I'm talking about that, <laughs> See, Terry Kennedy was first introduced to the public through the original Baker video. They did porn? Really? Someone said back in his porn time. Casey's in here. Casey. Casey, what was Terry Kennedy's old YouTube series? Ashton said. Remember, remember that fucking damn, I forgot what that shit was called. I don't know if it was like one long video or like a little series. Casey typing like this. Everyone waiting for Casey right now. Casey, speed it up a notch, would you? Casey's probably laughing right now. Casey, what the hell? Hell nah, I wasn't making it for We know that, bro. Which were absolutely massive videos back then that have since become known as classics in the skateboarding world. These videos were filled with hijinks and random moments the Baker team had while out skating. And they were some of the first videos that really captured the personality of the skaters being shown. As one of the first black skaters, Terry Kennedy was a beacon and a role model for a ton of skateboarders. And due to his marketability, it didn't take long for him to spread into other ventures as well. Soon after his professional skate career started taking off, he began appearing in TV shows. He was featured in music videos for popular rappers, and he even got his own show on BET. Terry Oh, he got a show on BET. Featured in music videos for popular really? rappers. Was it this? And no. he even got his own being Terry Terry Kennedy? It, it was this? it was just like him and his homies fucking around with the camera, uh, like on YouTube. Oh, okay, okay. Damn, this is already making me sad because I know how it ends. Like, it's like, ah, damn, he seems like a great-ass dude. Hella charismatic. Everyone loves him, you know, good for energy. Real. Stayed, kind of, for the most part, you know, stayed out the way of, like, trouble and shit. Yo, if me or Brian killed somebody, oh my god, are you guys supporting us still? Terry was on a hot streak that few pro skaters could relate to. It's hard to know the exact numbers, but it's safe to say he was earning well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And as someone who came from such humble beginnings, he made sure the world knew it. Damn, TK was guys. among the first skaters to really flaunt wealth, showing off the rims of his car, the jewelry he wore, and the houses he bought for himself and his family. When you f- the bankers, that's what you get. This was all a part of his image though, which in some ways helped him grow even more. The flashy lifestyle is something he's talked about openly. He had a list of amazing sponsors, he was highly regarded throughout the skateboarding community, and he managed to diversify into other avenues of media which is something many pro skaters struggle with. Terry's career had reached the level that exceeds the expectations. They do. I don't know why a lot of pro skaters don't, like, dabble in other types of media and stuff, you know? I mean, obviously now that, like, most pro skaters post consistently on, like, Instagram and stuff, but, like, I'm surprised over the last 10 years, more pro skaters didn't, like, make YouTube channels and make content. Because, like, all they cared about was strictly just skating. Yeah, exactly. Getting those clips. Like... You know, a lot of the early pros like Deer Dick and stuff, you know, they had TV shows or like P-Rod and them, like they were, you know, in street dreams, like whole ass movies. But most of them just skated and filmed like street parts. ...of the majority of skateboarders. But like most things, it wouldn't last forever. By the time TK really started taking off, he was in his mid to late 20s, which is towards the latter half of a skateboarding career's expectancy. Now, although skate careers don't have a specific cutoff age, anything past 30 tends to be considered kind of old. This isn't always a definitive rule, though. What do you think is old for skating? Like, to start skating or just skating in general? Like, just to keep skating. Um, like, if you're still skating at a certain age. 50, 55. 50, oh, shit, he said 30. 30 is say, I know, he said anything past 30 is considered old. Fucking Nigel's about to be 30. Like, after, like, 40 to 45, after that, then it's like, you're old. 
for for a skater to still be on your board. There's plenty of pros that are in their mid to late thirties that are still a hucking shit, bro. I think Shane O'Neill like is thirty, like he's thirty one or something. But he does kind of have a point because most of like the more popping, like hot faces, yeah. tend to be like the ones in their twenties. You know? know? Are you still looking for it? Yes, bro. This shit was uploaded fifteen years ago. Doesn't have a name. Maybe it didn't have a name, like the series. Oh, I think this is the video. Oh, really? I was trolling. This really? shit was posted fifteen years ago. Like I just went like that, and I remember like a lot of this shit. Yeah, see, look, it was just like him and his homies fucking around, like they're in an elevator and shit. I don't know why I remember this vi this fucking video. <laughs> I found it, Casey. Someone said it's called Ice Cream Skate Team. Oh yeah, damn the was? fucking memories you guys are unlocking right now. Damn, I never watched it. Damn, I forgot all about that shit. Of prolific skateboarders who continue to push themselves well into their 30s and beyond. The thing is, that wasn't the approach TK was taking. Although he was pursuing several ventures throughout his career, his skating itself had seemingly stalled. The variety of tricks he was doing, as well as his overall skill level, were beginning to stagnate, and cracks were beginning to show. A couple of his other projects had done alright, but skateboarding was still the main driver of everything else. By focusing on so many different hustles, he let his skate career slip, and once the other ventures fell through, it would eventually catch up with him. Damn, that's so dramatic. This dude's real. good at making videos. It's widely known that a great way to differentiate yourself in skateboarding is with your personality. Two skaters can do the exact same trick, but if one person has a more appealing character, their efforts can go much further in the industry. This concept is what really helped to build up Terry Kennedy's career. He was never the best skater on the team, but he had a very dynamic personality that appealed to people. In a lot of footage, he would be loud and eccentric, which can be seen in many of the earlier skate videos he was featured in. See, that's what like people don't get. Like people tell me, like, oh, this is part of the video. People, oh, really? This, yeah. this, this is the video you're talking about? Oh shit, we about to see it. We about to see it. But people tell me, like, oh, if if you didn't do YouTube, you could have gone pro. And I'm like, no, bro. If I if I didn't do YouTube, like people people enjoy my videos, um, because of, because of my my personality. That's what people gravitate towards. M me as a skater, um, like I just like. I don't know, me backside flipping like a nine stair, that doesn't really stand out too much. You feel me? Like, I, I don't think I would have. If if I was to want to go that route, you know, like, I don't think it would have gone that great. I guess I'm saying. When he talked to someone in person, though, especially as he got older, he could also be very calm, kind, and soft-spoken. And overall, he was pretty well-rounded. This side of him was shown much more in his interviews. I, I would never turn my back on the straight skate industry. Never, 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 never. And I was always in debt everything to skateboard because that's what you know allowed me to have a family now mm -hmm. skaters didn't care if tk skating wasn't as great as other pros because it was his personality that captivated them the problem is personality can only take you so far while other skaters in his generation were continuing to progress putting out more and more skate videos and competing in contests terry never kept up he was one of the fastest people to ever become a professional skateboarder but after really? his first few years his Wait, skating he was one seemed of the fastest to become a pro they, I think they said in like a couple years he was pro already. Damn. Is that still true to this day? Or who's the fastest? Because he said one of the fastest. Probably fucking Nigel. Now I feel like he was like still am when he was like, nah, wait, wasn't he like 12? I don't even know. I think Nigel was pro at like 11. But he was skating since he was like four. So I think like year, year wise. Oh, since like starting to skate and then being pro? Yeah. Like started at 15, went pro at 16 type shit. Like I wonder Damn. like if anyone's gone pro in like a year or less. Or... No, no, yo, okay. a year is crazy. A year, you can learn a lot in a year, but you're not, it you could know. probably It could probably happen. Oh, I don't know. It could happen. I mean, if you, if you get that good to where it's even a question in just a year, then you're definitely on track to go pro no matter what. But like a year is crazy. Cause I feel like being pro isn't only about like skill level. But it's also about like paying your dues, you know, putting out street parts and stuff. You feel me? Yeah. Representing com these companies at contests or whatever, you know, like it's it's more than just getting good. To taper off, <laughs> Terry long, was dude. rarely putting out footage. He never skated in contests, and he started to disappear from the scene entirely. Although career slowing down a little is normal with older skateboarders, oh for TK, this was something he didn't handle very well, and it was the start of a much darker path. When you look back on footage, Terry Kennedy always had hints of sporadic behavior that would appear from time to time. In many of his earlier antics, it was mostly chalked up to young guys simply That's having fun. As he got older though, things began to get more serious. One of the first public displays of this was when he abruptly quit the Baker team for a day over a seemingly minor issue. 
for Although a day. it was quickly fixed and he was back on the team right away, it was surprising that he would leave the team he'd been with for over a decade just to rejoin a day later. When asked about it, he seemed level-headed. Good explanation or not though, many people saw it as a red flag, and rightfully so. About two years after the first incident, Terry abruptly quit Baker again, posting a video on Instagram that had since been deleted where he seemingly called out certain members of the company. Shortly after, he released a skate video with a new board company that ultimately had mixed reviews. Some skaters still enjoyed it simply because they were fans of TK, but others pointed out that the level of skating wasn't very impressive for a professional, with one comment saying, this part would have been okay 10 plus years ago, and another Damn, one reading, I'd be nice hurt if I put out a part and I got, like you put your blood, sweat, and tears into the part and then obviously like no matter what, there's always going to be people like, you know, with hate in the comments, even Nige's part this past year that was like one of like if not the best part i've ever seen for real and like you know there was at least like 20 to 30 percent of people in the comments like still talking shit nice to see he hasn't learned anything new in the past 13 years lol glad for baker damn bro that's why people people keep telling me to put out another part and i'm like bro it would be the same tricks at different spots like i need a I need to get a little better before I put out another part. See, he hasn't learned anything new in the past 13 years. The sudden departure from Baker and subsequent release of his less than impressive video part under a new and mostly unknown company were both early signs of the unraveling that was beginning. This is the time oh, that's period that set where right there in LA near uh, it's just big as hell, near Jaquan. It's, just, it's like a long what, like 11 stair? Yeah. Is the rail still skatable? I see people skate the rail right here against the wall. That's scary. Imagine your leg gets like caught in between. I don't even remember if that rail's there. When okay, have you ever put out like a street part? I know you're working on one. Have you put out? Um, like a proper one. I remember I put out one like a skate park edit. That shit was sick. So this will be your first like legit street part. I think so. Yeah, all the other shit I put out was just like like a minute worth of just like like raw footage clips. Yeah, I feel you. Were both early signs of the unraveling that was beginning. This is the time period where things really started to get odd. Terry Kennedy had successfully made it out of the hood at an early age but would occasionally have moments where it would try to pull him back in. For the most part, TK had matured past that life, and would even talk about how he's a family man with a wife and kids. Somewhere down the line though, things began to change. For whatever reason, one day, Terry randomly started posting weird rants on social media, calling out various gangs. I told you Stop playing! Y'all talking! We drop Call me! Let's go! It was unclear why exactly he was posting them, or who specifically they were directed to, but seeing an older pro skater with a family making those videos was alarming, to say the least. This concern was pointed out in a comment saying, I don't know if anyone is paying attention Casey, to Terry's was, Instagram, but it's really- I was just about to say Casey's profile pic, fuck. Oh uh, yeah, see, Casey's fucking profile picture looks like the thing on your desktop. Pro. <laughs> Any red logo now, I'm just gonna think of Casey. I know, for real. Fuck. W Casey. I, like, didn't want to bring it up because it's, like, a serious part of the vid. <laughs> but, like, we were both thinking it. Seems like the man needs help. No one seems to be helping him or even talking about it. Something is definitely not right. The skate community had no idea what was going on behind the scenes with his family or the gangs he was calling out. All that was known were bits and pieces that skaters would tell each other about random encounters they had with TK. I'm like, yo, blessings, like, yo, appreciate what you did for, like, being, like, a black skater. And he was like... Blessings, you blessings. I love you, bro. Like, and it was just so tweakerish. Like, yeah, like I didn't interact with so many tweakers in my life, bro. Yeah, like, you kind of know that energy. I was huh? just like, Damn. he was sweating and not moving, huh? Rumors began to circulate that he was suffering from CTE, which seems plausible for a veteran skateboarder. While others speculated that he was actually struggling with drug addiction, which is almost just as likely. Regardless of what was causing it, it was clear that Terry was becoming unhinged. A lot is unknown about what exactly went on during this period but it seemed like there were people taking advantage of TK. At some point, he separated from his family and cut off many of his friends, and stories were surfacing that a new manager was manipulating him, using a psychotic breakdown as an opportunity to help himself. There were clearly some major issues going on behind the scenes, but as bad as things already were, they were about to get even worse. Were you like seeing all what? this unfold? Like, cause you were, you were skating and you were like around during this time, right? Um. You were living in LA. No, but I don't think I was paying that much attention. I feel you. Like, I remember Casey. I think Casey told me, like, yeah, like, Terry Kennedy's in jail. I was like, what? I would hear his name, you know, here and there, but yeah. I wasn't, like, very tapped in. Never have been. So that's why, like, a lot of this is, is news to me. 
Yo, villager, do they still make this? What was it, coconut, coconut water? Do they Ew. still make this? I mean, I, I, I don't really like coconut water, but I know that was like P-Rod's company. And I just thought it was sick to see P-Rod get in like, like a Vons. While out visiting his new girlfriend near Chicago, Terry Kennedy met a 23-year-old skater named Josiah Kazahan. Josiah is described as oh, being an amazing really friend sick. who's always focused on positivity. He was well known in the local skate scene and was an easygoing person to get along with. Josiah grew up as a fan of Terry. So when Josiah saw him out skating one day, he went up to talk to him, quickly sparking a friendship. For the remainder of TK's trip, the two hung out frequently, spending a lot of time skating together. The night before Terry was set to return to LA, they allegedly even partied together at the hotel he was staying at. Early the next morning, however, Terry began having another one of his episodes, and that's when things took a turn for the worst. Apparently, Terry's girlfriend had originally agreed to give him a ride to the airport, but since she had been drinking, she suggested that they call an Uber instead. This quickly prompted a heated argument between the two in the middle of the hotel parking lot. When Josiah tried to calm Terry down and de-escalate the situation, Terry allegedly punched Josiah in the face, leading him to fall to the ground and hit his head on the concrete. There's some speculation that Terry then kicked Josiah while he was on the ground, before taking his girlfriend's car and driving away, leaving her in the parking lot with Josiah unconscious and bleeding. After paramedics arrived, Josiah was taken to the nearby hospital, where he unfortunately passed away a few days later. Terry Kennedy was soon arrested for the event, and after being detained, apparently threatened the lives of the police officers who placed him under arrest. Damn. Throughout this period, TK's new manager took over his Instagram, promoting some weird businesses for weeks, posting some cryptic things about TK, and sharing some rather distasteful content, before the page was eventually shut down. This manager was seen with Terry a few times before the arrest, but the way he handled the situation after the arrest led to a lot of speculation about whether he was manipulating or taking advantage of Terry during a mental episode. His manager has claimed that that's not the case, and in an interview even said that he saved TK from being homeless. Since not much is known about his manager, it's difficult to know what to believe, but the relationship definitely seems suspicious, and we may never know what the full truth is. You hear a lot of stories about like people's careers like taking a turn and like their manager had some involvement, you know? Yeah. Even with with Steve Fernandez, like, you know, his manager was the one who got arrested with him and from from like the sound of it was the one behind pulling all the strings that like Yeah. You know, unfortunately led to the arrest and like the downfall. I mean this is just this is just a speculation, you know. Like he said, it's not it's not confirmed, but like he's we just saying we like we can't get any managers. He's just saying the uh the relationship was a little a little suspicious. What we do know is that over the following months Terry went to trial for the hotel incident, eventually being sentenced to 10 years in prison, five years for aggravated battery, and five years for threatening a public official. There is a possibility he'll get out much sooner, but that largely depends on his behavior, which so far hasn't been the best. It's been said that during the trial, he showed no remorse for what he did, staring down Josiah's family at the courtroom and even flipping them off at one point. During the trial, Damn. it was ruled that TK wasn't cl Nah, wow, no remorse is crazy. Flipping them off. Flipping them point. off? Bro, the disrespect. Imagine, like, being, like, you know, the other person's family and, like, imagine your blood just boiling after getting flipped off. Oh, my God, bro. That's that's disrespect to, like, another level. But, yeah, he had to have not been in his right Clinically state, right? insane, as some have guessed, and is fully aware of his actions. However, longtime fans of his have noticed that he clearly shows a history of erratic behavior, and it doesn't seem like he's all there mentally. Perhaps he's not unhinged enough to be declared clinically insane, but there definitely seems to be some mental issues at play. Regardless of his mental condition oh, though, his actions life. led to the death of a young skater who was loved by many people in his community. Terry Kennedy briefly rose to a level of fame far greater than many other skateboarders in history. But sadly, his legacy will forever be brought down by the series of events. The unfortunate reality of it all is that his story went from being one of the most inspiring to one of the most tragic. And even if he is somehow reformed when he gets out, the negative consequences of his actions will be felt forever. Hell no, I don't get any managers. For real, that's how like, unless it's like someone like, you already can trust before My mom wants to be of... my manager. They? Perfect. Momager. 